Welcome on the live show. This is your host, Adnan Maksud. Excited to come on this live broadcast. Listen, somebody who are watching right now, I have a very special guest, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed with their conversations and what Lord had done in their life. And we're going to be talking about their books, their ministry. They have a great influence, and especially my guest, First, I will be talking and introducing. He been in uh, ministry for over 40 years, and I'm telling you, some of the story that he shared with me it melted my heart. And I am telling you today, we're gonna have a phenomenal time. If you guys are watching on the social media, would you give me a favor? Please share this broadcast with your family, friends, or maybe tag somebody name right below this video. And if you're watching on the television, maybe you wanna head over to your neighbor home knock on the door and tell them you got to watch this show or this show is about to start so you getting great ideas from me right so please please continue share continue comment and i'm sure it's going to be a worthwhile for you to invest next 28 minutes of your time with us so i want to welcome without any delay first of all prophet bill yant and his son joel yant all the way from Hagerstown, Maryland. Did I say it correct? Hagerstown. Hagerstown. <laughs> so it's it's very close to Hagar. Yes, interesting. Right? <laughs> so tell me about yourself, um, uh, Prophet. Uh, how long you've been in the ministry? And when did you felt that God is calling you not into a ministry, but a prophetic ministry? Well, it seemed like early on I began to hear things and see things concerning people and it's it would surprise me that they said yeah that's that's for me yeah and the holy spirit little by little is giving us the kingdom i believe and he doesn't raise us up overnight because we would you know get proud and lose it but it just started like late late i'd say early teens but uh it just seemed like it just kept flowing little by little. Yeah. And then I began to write things down. Wow. And I've noticed when you write down things that God speaks to you, it, it's like it cements it and seals it in your spirit. and You don't forget it. Yeah. A lot of people receive words. It's always good to get it recorded or written down because as life goes on, it unfolds more and more of that word to you as you even get older. Yes, wonderful. And Joel, you've been, you're not n new to the media or ministry, you know, you probably uh, know it all. And the reason word I use probably because you've been probably still looking out uh, for new things, what Lord has had to speak to you. Yeah. But being at uh, the child of a minister, tell me what, what was your experience growing up? Yeah, well, growing up, um, I, I just remember watching uh, Kim Clement's broadcast wow. online, just fascinated by the content and uh, more specifically praying for the nation. Um, Kim was always about speaking life and, you know, praying for the USA and um, other nations around the world, of oh, course. Oh, there was Australian, right? Or South African? Yeah, so, uh, South so, African. South African. And um, just tremendous influence in, in the prophetic and um, one of the key things that really grabbed a hold of my attention with Kim was um, uh, prophetic words he would receive way before, you know, way into the future. But it, it caused many believers to begin to pray for those things way back in advance. And yeah. of course, just recently, something monumental has taken place in the U.S., uh, the, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Yes. And that's one of the things Kim prophesied way back about. And wow. So um, just my, my attention was always drawn to what is God speaking for today? Uh, what's God doing in the nation? Um, that's always captivated my attention and, um, you know, with prayer, things like that. Yep, awesome. So you both written book and that's awesome i am right i always say i'm in a process of writing a book it's all those completed but never published it i really really get, need to get my book published but your book is right here um uh bill it's called uh, some hair thunder uh but i hear roar and then as, as forwarded by dave mcdaniel supernatural encounter and stories to encourage your heart by 
uh, brilliant if those watching on online you can get access of this book on Amazon is yeah. that correct yeah Amazon also on your uh, website www.billyant.com uh, and mm -hmm. the name of the ministry is blowing the shofar ministry yeah very interesting I never heard anybody you know naming their ministry blowing the shofar but uh, to me, as soon as I said that word, it's, I had like a glimpse in my head. The picture, mental picture formed is mm -hmm. millions of people there and the shofar is being blown. Yeah. So tell me, what did, uh, why did you write this book and uh, with what perspective you had in mind to write this book? Well, I really dedicated this book to my mother. Uh, when she was 11, she used to attend Catherine Coleman meetings in Pittsburgh. Yeah. When she was 11, and uh, she stood between her mother and a five-year-old boy. And before Catherine Coleman ever came on the stage during worship, uh, Grandma had a huge goiter on the side of her neck, and Mom said, I happened to look up. And she said, I saw that huge goiter instantly disappear. Mm -hmm. She began to cry and weep because she was so young, it shocked her. Grandma looked down and said, honey, why are you crying? And she said, oh, mommy, you just swallowed that big goiter. And now you've got a hole in the side of your neck. Grandma looked down and said, honey, don't worry. If God took that big goiter out, yes. <laughs> he could fill in that little hole. And the next split second, mom said, this five-year-old boy started jumping up, screaming and shouting, mommy, where are you? Oh, mommy, where are you? The mother was right beside the boy, and she said, honey, I'm right here. Mom said, I saw that five-year-old boy jump up into his mother's arms, push his little hands on her face, began to shout, oh, mommy, I can see you. I can see you, mommy. And she, the mother began to shout and scream he was born blind. So between two miracles in about 10 seconds, my mother at 11 years of age got the mindset, this is the way my life's going to be. See, when you believe in a miracle, it's one thing, but when you see them, it's another. She lived that way 90 years, and her, her, she had a gift of faith, and she actually, because what she got, it came down her family tree, and yeah. I, 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 I boldly say to people, healing runs in my family. Yes. When, when parents or grandparents gets it, it runs onto your seed, and seed seed is blessed. So. Uh, it's dedicated. My mother's miracles and healings are in there. Also, yeah. some prophetic words God's given me. And uh, mom had such a gift of faith. She would. She told us kids before she knew she was going to meet the Lord. She she told us family members. She said, "Listen, uh, when I leave this world, I want you to tell the uh, funeral director not to put any shoes or socks on me." because I want to dance in the streets of gold in my bare feet. Mm. Because mom all, almost lost her one foot because of sugar diabetes. But she, God, God lengthened her days and healed it through time. And she said, uh, these bare feet, I'm going to walk on the dance in the streets of gold. Wow. So the, she has a powerful legacy in the book. And I believe that book helps release generational blessings. Yes. Even like my son Joel and myself there's a generational blessing being released like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob going into the kingdom now through our families. It's running, running crazy. That's phenomenal. And, and this book you have, there's a chapter, let's see. Oh, I never seen ABC, ABC, like, oh, wow, that's cool. Um, so there is um, at page 25 and it says overlook treasure. So, overlooked treasure. Yes. Yeah. One of the things with my mother, as she got older, she was in assistant living center, then the rest rest center up there in Catani, Pennsylvania. I met some interesting people that mom became friends with. Some of them have gifts of healing. Uh, the one lady was saying how, uh, as a young girl, her mother was blind, yeah. and she began to pray for her mother. She just said simple words, God heal mom. That's yeah. all she said. And the next day, it was it, it began to get in the papers. People knew her, her testimony of being healed by the young daughter. And I, I was going through something to myself in my body, and I, I had that lady, older, older lady, pray for me, and the pain was gone. And wow. the next day, I realized it wasn't there anymore. We've overlooked treasure in older people. 
Yes. I really sense God saying we need the wisdom and understanding that only comes through the the taking the road less traveled by. Yes. Older people, they took the road less traveled by. That's what there's greater wisdom and anointing. And uh, we, we need the older generation and the younger. And uh, you can't have one without the other. God, God's cementing the generations together because of our great need for each other. Yeah. So when you go to rest homes, even prisons, I was in prison ministry 23 years, 23 years. Uh, men are on fire in prisons because they've lost everything. They have nothing to lose. They go out for God. Yeah. And so that's a blessing too. You, you meet people in those places that most even a lot of church people don't have time to go into, but there's treasures. Because when you meet these kind of people, Jesus is saying, you're meeting me. Yes. You're touching my wisdom now. Yeah. And you, you get blessed from it. Share some of the miracles and uh, uh, prophecy that you uh, prophesy over people and how the how your ministry been a catalyst in the life of those that who followed you and who have gleaned wisdom and also mm -hmm. received miracles. Yeah. Well, often when I minister in churches and places, I, as I'm ministering, God will highlight somebody. You know how that is. And a word will just come spontaneously. Yes. And I love it when I don't know people. I love to go new places so I don't know anybody. Yes. But since God knows everybody, he lets us in on their email and, you know, what's going on inside. That's always a tremendous blessing. Plus, blowing this shofar, uh, the Lord has healed quite a few people just blowing it. I was in a yeah. meeting one time and uh, blew the shofar for healing, wow. releasing it. And... Uh, a lady got up after the service near the end and said, I know God just healed me from his breath blowing out the end of that shofar. Wow. God showed me by faith when I blow it in one end. He lives in us, so is his breath by faith coming out. She said, I believe God just healed me at that with the shofar blowing the shofar because God told me years ago, when I get healed of this lupus, no man will touch me. It'll be the God that gets glorified. So she stood up. And you know how we think. Well, I hope it really took effect like though she said. I went back six months later to the same church. She got up and testified again. The doctors proved it by testing. So uh, God, it's we're in a time that God's using foolish things. I thought, you know, carrying a shofar down the aisle at a processional one year, taking a Jewish rabbi's place, kind of foolish but that thing has taken me to, to nations at times and yes we don't I, I tell people listen if God can can use you and me and get away with it he can use anything yes he so can, true. he can use that shofar. And you uh, said shofar uh, and uh, I was thinking in my mind right now like how could somebody be healed by blowing this shofar and then instantly scripture came into my mind thinking about if the wall of Jericho can yeah. tumble down by blowing the shofar, <laughs> why can't people be healed? That's like, it. you know, I'm questioning myself and getting an answer by the, I think that's the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm like yeah. throwing a question and there you go. The answer is yeah. coming right there. Yeah. This is so powerful. We're coming to a season now. I think we've been in it and not aware of it. Uh, I had the opportunity recently to be invited to minister at an Amish and Mennonite group. Wow. It's rare in Pennsylvania and uh, my son-in-law who has some Mennonite roots and, and uh, Amish roots in him, when my wife told him this invitation, he said, how'd that happen? Because he knew. Your, your son? My son-in-law, my, son -in -law, my oh, one son-in-law. Son he, said, he said right away, how'd that happen? Because he knew the tradition and how yeah. we get, we all get stuck in things yeah. when we walk with the Lord. Yeah. So I, all I knew is I didn't know the couple who invited us I had a word release in 2006. God was moving in Amish communities. I saw a white horse pulling a king's carriage, mm -hmm. like an Amish buggy, but it was a king's carriage through Amish country. So I think it was coming to being manifested. So it was a great meeting, you know, and a lot of people just like me, before I ministered, God said, get over the title of Amish and Mennonite. There are people just like you. Yeah. They have the same needs. So Wonderful. we need to, we need to get closer to people. Absolutely. And now next, let's talk about another book. It's uh, 
speaking life to the nations, uh, the United States of America, declarations to speak out loud for your nation and community. Here, this book is written by Joel Yant, and a uh, very nice book. And um, I'm very uh, curious to know more about this book. Uh, why did you write this book? And what was the motivation behind it? I think the motivation goes back uh, many years ago. Um, growing up, I did not have access to 800 channels. Wow. <laughs> a lot of That's kids rare. grew up. What year are we talking about that, Joel? Uh, probably around 2005 and, and 2005, beyond that. Yeah. But, you know, to, a lot of kids. In America? Yeah. Was it like that? Was cable existed in America 2005? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of kids have access to so many media channels and cartoons and stuff, but uh, primarily all I had to watch was the news mm. on those very few channels. And um, I began to learn who's in the White House, who's in Congress, what's happening in the nation, everything related to news. And um, it just stuck with me ever since. I always keep tabs every day what's going on in the world and um, you know just recently the Lord's been given challenging me and giving me a strategy to not just watch the news and yeah. feed on what's coming in yes but a call to action to begin to pray okay what's we're hearing this has taken place but now we have to pray yeah we have to take this to intercession and one of the top things that have just happened, the overturning of Roe v. Wade in America, so many intercessors have been praying for this for so many years. Yeah. And I feel like what has just taken place with this example is a call and an encouragement from mm -hmm. God yeah. to say, you know, look what else I can do. But we need to pray. We can't just sit back and just say, well, this is happening, so that's going to be the way it is. No, we're called to rise up, stand and pray, and speak life to the nation. That is powerful. I love that, speaking life to the nations. And uh, who was the president in 2005? That's Tough a great question. question. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. Maybe uh, I think um, George Bush was in 2008, and before him probably was uh, Bill Clinton. I don't know when did he resign. And, um, sure. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it's, it's very interesting that you said you really took an interest into the uh, news and watching channel. What, what really drived you like to watch news versus cartoons? And, uh, and after done watching news, what is your outcome of the news? And what do you think about today? News? I Watching the news, it just gave me a, a fascination of people in the media realm, the yes. media world. Yeah. Um, we would go and take trips to New York City, yes. uh, Good Morning America, really? uh, Fox. You've been to their setup? Yeah, or? inside Fox News Channel. Really? And so this, I just developed this um, fascination. fascination. And, um, you know, the Lord's kind of using that with me now to this day, stepping out and doing weekly interviews with people. Nice. With the prophetic current events. And um, I have a weekly program called uh, the Joel Yunt program. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Rumble, nice. and uh, my website, joelyunt.com. And just just hearing about what God is saying today, yes. what's coming, but also take it in, into prayer. Because, you know, it's one thing to hear a prophetic word from someone, yeah. but it's a whole other thing to not just pray about it, but take action. You know, a lot of people, I believe, receive prophetic words, but they sometimes sit back and expect God to do everything. Yes. But it's by prayer and faith, which means stepping out in the natural and doing some actions to yes. see that word come to pass. Come on. I love it. You know, and uh, what do you, uh, you, you mentioned Roe v. Wade and, you know, what do you make out of the news that, you know, narrative? Because... Before Trump became president, I I used to watch CNN and I watched Fox News too, but I kind of like CNN a lot, you know, with their content, professionalism, mm -hmm. and I always like some here and there, mm -hmm. had a fascination about the social uh, social media, but I really love the television too. So what do you take, what's your take on 
you know, all these uh, televisions, although you've been to Good America, Good Morning America, but uh, what is your take to, uh, to current news and, and what do you think that the Lord is speaking to it? I think God is making uh, some major shifts yes. in, me, in news and media right now. Yeah. I feel like um, there was a lot of explosion. Right, right. I feel like God has a way of getting things leaked out yes. that He wants to. And uh, speaking of the word leak, we saw that this year when something leaked out yeah. about what was coming with Roe v. Wade yeah. before that took place. And so, but I, I really believe, and I see in the natural as well, yeah. I see people God is raising up that are starting uh, weekly programs such yeah. as yourself. And um, God's just raising up a remnant, I believe, yeah. to get information out yeah. that sometimes the traditional media would never touch. Mm. And so I think that's where we're at, where uh, so many things are in play and God's actually looking for more willing vessels to step up into media right now. Yes, sir. To grab a hold of the baton and run with it yes. and, and work with God. You know, some people, like with media, what we do, um, some people, when they begin, they feel like they have to have everything figured out. Mm. They have to know, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I'll be honest, you know way, the way I do it sometimes? Yeah. I'll wake up one morning with someone's name on my mind. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why didn't I think of that last week? And I'll reach out and they'll respond and we'll get something together. And so mm -hmm. it's it's about working with the Lord yeah. in what we're doing. It's not about uh, the weights on my shoulder. I have to do everything. God wants to help us, but he needs us to reach out in that mm -hmm. relationship and powerful things can begin to happen. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. I really love it. Um, so I want to ask um, right now uh, to Bill um, about what the Lord is speaking to you. But if you're expecting something in your life to happen, maybe you're expecting for a word to be released from heaven for you. Or maybe you've been through something or last week, you know, you dealt with something that really crushed you. And you felt like, oh, my God, I'm going to give up right now. I don't feel I, I don't know what to do. I feel terrible. Uh, I feel like giving up right now. But I want to ask Bill to like you, although you have a word for Texas, but also people here in Houston watching, mm -hmm. what can, uh, what is the Lord speaking? You know, I know this is a very open ending question, but also I want you to squeeze in the word of encouragement and right looking into the camera. Sir. Yeah. Well, I sense a lot of people have been traumatized because their life didn't go the way they thought it would or relationships or, or different areas of their life. Reminds me of the miracle plane that landed in the Hudson River. Uh, nobody thought it would land there, but that was a place of miracles. And what gets me is when they when it was floating and slowly sinking, the only way to stand is for the passengers to survive was standing on the wings. And I felt like the Lord was saying at that moment, if they could have heard God say them, and also with the audience here, by the way, I'm with you still. You're still alive. Because of me, I, I kept you here. And by the way, those are my wings you're standing on. Wow. When we realize we're standing on the wings of God, wow. our trauma becomes holy ground. Our problem is the devil talks us out of uh, thinking, oh, your trauma, nobody will, you, nobody will get you better. God can't heal that. No, if we focus on God in the midst of our trauma, our trauma actually becomes holy ground. And here's the question many are hurting and want to quit. But here's the question from the Lord. He's asking you the question, will you fly again? Will you fly again? Will you get up again one more time of a broken heart or relationship and say you'll never love anybody anymore? But would you fly again with me? God has a, another plane boarding now, supernaturally. He, if we, we need to follow on to know the Lord. We believed in him. We got to know him. But he says, now I want you to follow on to know me more. That's when the, what, what the healing comes. If we follow on, that's where we meet our healing. And it's, it's in deliverance many times. So I believe, uh, will you fly again? Get up. You know, don't be traumatized by trauma anymore. Uh, there's a fresh anointing being released. In fact, the healing's running in your family. Start saying that. Start speaking healing 
not only to the nation, it's in God's, in Joel's book too, speak life to your family. Uh, when I was in the emergency room with a blood clot in my artery, uh, God says, son, I know, I want to tell you a secret. If the devil can do that to you, I can outdo him. Ever since that morning in the emergency room, I start to tell everybody in the world, I'm being attacked by healing. I'm being attacked by healing because healing runs in my family and the doctor's report keeps measuring up to what God told me 18 years ago. So we have to, we have to keep on going in spite of it. Get past the trauma, get past the heartache. God's a healer. He'll heal you inside and out. Amen. Amen. That's so true. God is a healer and He's going to heal you in a very mysterious way. And uh, maybe you're going to get healed uh, at the time when you most unexpected. So, Joel, yeah. I'm going to ask you, please, how people can get these books and uh, how people can contact you here over to you in less than a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my dad's book, they can get it through billyunt.com, Amazon. Uh, same with my book. It's on Amazon, joelyunt.com. And uh, I just want to encourage you today, um, those of you walking through um, a trial or a difficulty right now, uh, the mountain in front of you is not bigger than the Creator who created you. And I just want to encourage you to walk forward in boldness and victory that um, God has an amazing purpose for your life, and so don't give up now. You know, just over a week ago, an intercessor messaged me late one night, and she said, Joel, do you really realize uh, the power that is in your words? You know, when, when we begin to decree and declare God's word out loud over our lives, our families, our nation, she said, Joel, do you really realize the power in, the, in your words? And that got me thinking, that is such a now word yeah. for the world, for the body of Christ right now. We have to stand up and realize the power in our words. And so be encouraged today. Amen. Well, I'm going to encourage everybody to make sure you check out over television on channel 12.1 uh, locally here. You can download the app of CTN Houston on your Android cell phone or, or iPhone. And then you can also like, subscribe over CTN YouTube page, Facebook page, and uh, make sure to continue to watch. We upload, post fresh content every week on our social media platforms and on our, you know, uh, Roku, all these platforms. Everything is brand new, fresh. You want to watch it. I'm sure maybe some words that Joel or, uh, you know, Bill said, maybe it will touch your heart. So thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you so much for watching CTN Houston. Have a beautiful day.